All right, how's everybody doing? Hey, um, for the African History Network show, I forgot to talk about this uh, last topic. And it deals with uh, April 16th, 1862. With all the talk about uh, reparations uh, going on right now, and we know that the uh, U.S. House of Representatives and the House Judiciary Committee uh, Wednesday, April 14th, we know that uh, H.R. 40 was voted out of committee for the first time in uh, almost 33 years. Uh, a lot of people don't know April 16th, 1862. This is during uh, this is during the U.S. Civil War. Uh, President Abraham Lincoln signed uh, a bill to pay reparations to the uh, slave owners in Washington, D.C., okay? Now, this only applied to Washington, D.C., all right? Uh, this is known as the Compensated Emancipation Act, the Compensated uh, Emancipation Act of 1862. I've talked about this before. But what, what's interesting is that the uh, reparations weren't paid to enslaved Africans in Washington, D.C. It was paid to slave owners. All right. If we look at this uh, piece from the Zen Education Project, and let me uh, flip over here, Zen Education Project, April 16th, 1862, Compensated Emancipation Act, the Compensated Emancipation Act. So um, on April 16th, 1862, the District of Columbia Compensated Emancipation Act became law. Um, the federal government compensated the owners of enslaved people, enslaved Africans, for their loss of property. The people who were freed were not compensated nor given any assistance for the transition to their freedom. Now, this is during World War. Uh, this, this is during the Civil War. This is during the Civil War, 1861, 1865. This is 1862, the second year of um, the second year of the U.S. Civil War. Okay. Now, if we look at um, archives.gov. Archives.gov is the uh, U.S. National Archives. Archives.gov, okay? Uh, they have uh, information there dealing with the uh, Compensated Emancipation Act. All right? And go back and watch the, uh, go back and watch our show from uh, Wednesday, April 14th, because I dealt with the story from uh, the, the story of the passage of H.R. 40 in the House of Representatives, okay, the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, we talked about this article here from uh, the Washington Post right after the story broke. House panel approves bill to create commission on slavery reparations, okay? It goes to, uh, it has to go to the full uh, House of Representatives floor for a vote. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to pass in the House of Representatives, at least in this Congress, the 117th Congress. You need 218 votes to uh, get any bill passed in the uh, House of Representatives. I think now they have between 173 and maybe 190 votes for it. You need 218. No Republicans are going to vote for this. And you need 60 votes in the Senate. It's not going to pass in the Senate. Tell you that right now. That means you're going to need 10 Republicans to vote for this. No Republicans are going to vote for a reparations bill, even to study reparations. None. No Republicans voted for the American Rescue Plan and the American Rescue, the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, the coronavirus uh, uh, bill that uh, just passed. The, and, and they went in, the, no Republicans voted for that in the House of Representatives or the U.S. Senate, and it would largely benefit many white Republicans that voted them in the office, and they didn't even vote for that. So they're not voting for reparations, I'll tell you that right now. But if we look at the uh, uh, information here at archives.gov, U.S. National Archives, the District of Columbia Emancipation Act, the District of Columbia Emancipation Act. On April 16th, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed a bill ending slavery in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., Passage of this law came eight and a half months before President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, 
So that's going to be January 1st, 1863, okay, the actual Emancipation Proclamation. There was an initial one, September 22nd, 1862. The act brought to a conclusion decades of agitation aimed at ending white anti-slavery advocates, ending at what, uh, aimed at ending what anti-slavery advocates called, quote, the national shame, end quote, of slavery, the national shame of slavery in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Now, it provided for immediate emancipation, this um, District of Columbia Emancipation Act, signed April 16th, 1862, by President Abraham Lincoln. This, uh, this bill provided for immediate emancipation, compensation to former owners, former slave masters who were loyal to the union of up to $300 for each freed African slave, voluntary colonization of former slaves to locations outside the United States, and payments of up to $100 for each person choosing immigration, okay, choosing to leave the United States. Over the next nine months, the Board of Commissioners appointed to administer the act approved 930 petitions, completely or in part, they approved 930 petitions from former slave owners for the freedom of 2,989 African slaves, for the freedom of 2,989 African slaves. Now, keep in mind, the, the African slaves that are free, they're not getting, they didn't get reparations. It's the slave owners that got reparations. Now, although it's combination of emancipation, compensation to owners, and colonization did not serve as a model for the future, the District of Columbia Emancipation Act was an early signal of slavery's death in the uh, district, because this is during the Civil War, okay? Now, even though the Civil War is fought to bring the South back into the Union. This is why the Civil War was fought. Civil War starts April 12, 1861 with the attack on Fort Sumter in South Carolina. South Carolina seceded from the Union December 20th, 1860, six weeks after Abraham Lincoln became president-elect uh, in November of 1860, and South Carolina, and other southern states think Lincoln is going to free the slaves because Lincoln is the presidential candidate for the Republican Party. Republican Party is the is a newly formed political party formed by abolitionists and some some you're going to have some people that belong to the Whig Party, W H I G, the Whig Party, that was founded in 1834, the Whig Party. Uh, they're going to form the uh, a Republican Party in 1854 to be the counter to the Democratic Party at the time, okay? Now, for majority of the time, the slavery existed, because some people are confused on this history. The majority of the time that slavery existed in this country, you didn't have a Democratic Party or a Republican Party, because the Democratic Party wasn't founded to 1828. But you have slavery in the, in the uh, 1660s, in the mid 1600s, you know, and going into the late 1600s, I'm talking about chattel slavery. Okay, I'm not talking about the indentured servitude that existed in 1619, because codified slave laws didn't exist in any of the 13 colonies in 1619 when those 20 and odd Africans come in on the white line uh, pirate ship, the white line pirate ship into Point Comfort in Virginia. You didn't have chattel slavery in the 13 British colonies here that are going are going to form the United States. Um, so for the majority of the time that slavery exists in this country, you didn't have a Democratic or Republican Party. Although its combination of emancipation, compensation to owners and colonization did not serve as a model for the future. The District of Columbia Emancipation Act was an early signal of slavery's death. In the district itself, African Americans greeted emancipation with great jubilation. For many years afterward, the celebra they celebrated Emancipation Day on April 16th 
with parades and festivals. Okay. Uh, so this, the, the, so the civil war was fought to bring the South back into the union, which was the economic engine of the United States. But after the emancipation proclamation, January 1st, 1863, is going the, the is going to shift the focus is going to shift to um it's going to shift to freeing the slaves because the emancipation proclamation was an ultimatum to the states in rebellion to the territories in rebellion that if you do not uh it, so let's back up September 22nd, 1862 was the initial Emancipation Proclamation. And it stated that the, that the uh, territories in rebellion, if they did not come back into the Union, you know, stop fighting, come back into the Union, that their slaves would be set free. This is an ultimatum in, in its attempt to rob these southern states these Confederate states of their greatest asset, which were their enslaved Africans. But when you read the Emancipation Proclamation, it tells you that the that the territories or states that are border states, the territories that stay loyal to the Union, they can keep their slaves. So Maryland and Kentucky and Delaware, Missouri, they're allowed to keep their slaves. Okay, they're 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 allowed to keep their slaves. Um, so then the January, so the initial Emancipation Proclamation, September 22nd, 1862. Then you have the actual one that's issued January 1st, 1863. That and you can go to archives.gov and read it or loc.gov Library of Congress website. And it's saying that those territories that are still in rebellion that your slaves are free now, okay? But those territories in those Confederate states seceded from the Union, set up their own government, so you really don't have any control over what they do. Now, what's gonna happen as those territories become taken over by Union troops, the Union troops are going to free those slaves. That's over the next few years um, during the rest of the Civil War. but. You really don't have any authority to tell them what to do because they broke away from your country and set up their own country. They set up their own, they set up the Confederate States of America. They had their own uh, bylaws. They had their own monetary system. They really set up their own nation. They broke away from you. All right. Uh, so check this out. The District of Columbia Emancipation Act, April 16th, 1862. Okay, April 16, 1862. So a lot of people don't know that the U.S. paid reparations to slave owners in the District of Columbia, but the enslaved Africans, 2,989 enslaved Africans, basically, they, they didn't get reparations. Okay, so hey, if you like this type of information, uh, you you can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. Um, and then it, it, there was uh, or at our website AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Click, click on the uh, yellow donate button there as well. And then all of my DVD lectures and digital downloads are available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com also. Okay. There was um, an article from NewsOne.com uh, from a few years ago, back 2014, that talks about this topic as well. Uh, did you know... U.S. government paid reparations to slave owners. This is by Kirsten Westavali for News1.com. This is back when she wrote for News1.com. Um, let me see here. Let's close this out. Let's see. The Atlantic is about... Uh, let's see. 
According to the National Archives and Records Administration, the District of Columbia Act paved the way to compensate slave owners for their, quote unquote, loyalty to the union and for the loss of income incurred by uh, freeing the slaves. OK, so uh, you can check this out also at uh, newsone.com. Check out this article uh, as well. Uh, all right. Yeah, check out this article at news1.com. Did you know U.S. government paid reparations to slave owners from May 31st, 2014? All right, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct, wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you Sunday. Peace.